Now, the rest of the story. Pauline Sherwood Townsend stared at the letter in her hand as though trying somehow to see through the words inscribed thereon. The world-renowned drama teacher had, of course, received innumerable letters of introduction before. The vast majority of them she'd summarily dismissed, wishing instead to formulate her own opinion of a prospective pupil's ability. This particular letter of introduction, however, had been written by an acting coach whom Madame Townsend both knew and personally respected, Inez Ship. And so it was with irresistible fascination that the former perused the recommendation of the latter, pertaining specifically to a gifted young actress named Sarah Colley. It was astounding, and as Ship had written, Sarah's stage presence, her use of inflection, the precision of her timing, her skills were extraordinary, and in addition her natural talent, her self-discipline, her dedication to her craft, were greater than Miss Ship had ever observed in a student. Sarah must attend the prestigious Ward Belmont Academy, the letter said. She must study under the distinguished director of its drama school, Pauline Sherwood Townsend. Well, Madam Townsend opened a desk drawer and slipped the letter inside. Said to an assistant, show the girl in. A few moments later, Sarah Colley and the great professor of drama were alone. Your coach informs me that your gifts are considerable, Madam Townsend said crisply. Do you have a reading prepared? The striking 18-year young girl smiled eagerly, replied that indeed she had prepared a reading. The text had been memorized. So as Sarah, in character, glanced about the room, she could not help but notice that Madam Townsend's mouth, the teacher's mouth, was gradually falling open. What did you do, Madam Townsend asked, to strain your voice? Sarah, unaware until then that her voice had been strained at all, had to guess. Well, she said, I was a cheerleader in high school. A cheerleader, Madam Townsend exclaimed contemptuously. Well, that explains it, my dear. You have ruined the timber of your voice. Nothing can be done to restore it. Vocal purity is an essential for any dramatic actress. Sarah was suddenly panic-stricken. Couldn't I confine myself to characters who don't Need pure voices, she beseeched. I'm sorry, answered Madame Townsend, and rising from the chair behind her desk, she gestured toward the door, and Sarah Colley, in shock and despair, walked out. For once upon a lifelong dream abandoned, there was an aspiring actress whose respect for an illustrious personality was greater than her belief in herself. And thus was the perfunctory decree of Pauline Sherwood Townsend the end of Sarah Colley, and the beginning of a friend of yours. For Sarah did discover a character whom audiences came to love in spite of her imperfect voice, and that role she performed to perfection. You never knew of Sarah Ophelia Colley, whose one ambition, whose ultimate passion, was to become a legend in the legitimate theater, but you remember the person she became on the stage of the Grand Ole Opry, and her shrill greeting, howdy, and the dollar ninety-eight price tag dangling from the flowered straw hat of the neighbor you knew as Minnie Pearl. Only now you know the rest of the story. Howdy! And now for the rest of the rest of the story. When we think of Minnie Pearl, we don't normally think of drama or serious theater, and we shouldn't. Sarah Ophelia Colley was born in Centerville, Tennessee, about 50 miles southwest of Nashville. Young Sarah dreamed of acting on the stage. In this episode, Mr. Harvey explained that Sarah auditioned to study under Pauline Sherwood Townsend at Ward Belmont College, but her voice held her back. Well, apparently Miss Townsend had a change of heart because Sarah did attend and graduated from Ward Belmont College, now Belmont University, where she majored in theater studies and dance. For the first few years after graduating, Sarah taught dance. Then, in the late 1930s, she began working with the Wayne P. Sewell Production Company, a touring theater company based out of Atlanta, Georgia. To promote the shows, Sarah made brief appearances at civic organizations. While promoting a musical comedy in Baileyton, Alabama, Sarah met a woman that changed the course of her life. 
she adopted the woman's speech and clothing style, which did not include a hat. Based on that chance meeting of a stranger, Sarah began creating Cousin Minnie Pearl. Something was missing. In 1939, Sarah was set to perform as Cousin Minnie in Aiken, South Carolina. Before the show, Sarah went to Sarosky Brothers Department Store in downtown Aiken. While shopping for nothing in particular, Sarah put on a straw hat and began joking around in the Minnie Pearl character. The hat completed the character. Sarah bought the hat and headed to the theater. Now, it's unclear whether she intentionally left the price tag on the hat as a gag or whether it was just an accident, but it became a part of the Minnie Pearl character. She later said, The price tag on my hat seems to be symbolic of all human frailty. There's old Minnie Pearl standing on stage in her best dress, telling everyone how proud she is to be there, and she's forgotten to take the $1.98 price tag off her hat. Sarah as Minnie Pearl poked fun at rural southern culture. Rather than target other people, her jokes were aimed at herself, her fictional family, and her fictional hometown of Grinders Switch. She was always trying and failing to gain the attention of a feller. She told fictional joke-laden stories about her Uncle Nabob and Aunt Ambrosia, Lucifer Hucklehead, Miss Lizzie Tinkum, Doc Payne, and her brother whom remained nameless. Minnie Pearl once said about her Uncle Nabob, he ain't a failure. He just started at the bottom, and he liked it there. Although Sarah was from Centerville, Tennessee, the Minnie Pearl character was from a rural railroad town called Grinder's Switch. In reality, Sarah's father was a lumberman who shipped logs from the Grinder's Depot on the Centerville branch of the Nashville, Chattanooga, and St. Louis Railway. The railroad installed a sidetrack at Grinders Depot, which necessitated the installation of a switch to switch between the main line and the sidetrack. The depot was eventually demolished, but the switch and sidetrack remained. The area became known as Grinders Switch. Sarah said later, People always ask me, where is Grinders Switch? As I grew older, the place is no longer a little abandoned landing switch on a railroad in Hickman County. Grinder Switch is a state of mind, a place where there's no illness, no war, no unhappiness, no political unrest, no tears. It's a place where there's only happiness, where all you worry about is what you're going to wear to the church social and if your feller is going to kiss you in the moonlight on the way home. I wish for all of you a grinder switch. In 1940, Sarah performed as Minnie Pearl at a banker's convention in Centerville, Tennessee, her hometown. Executives from radio station WSM in Nashville saw her performance and arranged for her to perform on the Grand Ole Opry on November the 30th, 1940. Producers were worried that her hillbilly character would offend some listeners so Sarah had to perform Minnie Pearl after 11 p.m. Backstage, Opry producer George D. Hay saw that Sarah was visibly nervous. To ease her anxiety, George gave her a simple piece of advice. Just love them, honey. They'll love you back. And he was right. Cards and letters came pouring in. Minnie Pearl seemed to take on a life of her own. People could relate to Minnie Pearl. She gave people hope. Her family and friends, even her husband, Henry Cannon, called her not Sarah, but Minnie. Minnie Pearl was the first solo female member of the Grand Ole Opry. In 1975, she became the first female comedian inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. In the 1980s, Sarah was successfully treated for breast cancer, and she became an outspoken advocate for cancer research. Not Minnie Pearl, no, no, Sarah Cannon. In 1987, a cancer foundation to raise money for research was founded in Sarah's name. Sarah's name is also involved with another research center, the Sarah Cannon Research Institute. Sarah portrayed the character of Minnie Pearl for more than 50 years. 
Sarah Ophelia Kali Cannon never seemed to mind that she was overshadowed by the character she had created, Minnie Pearl. In fact, in many ways, she became Minnie Pearl. Now I'll leave you with just a sample of Sarah's, well, Minnie Pearl's talent. I'm Brad Dyson. Thanks for watching. And now you know the rest of the rest of the story. Here, I'll tell you right now, I come in there tonight and there was two nice looking fellas standing there and one of them said to the other and he said, I believe that's the ugliest woman I ever seen. The other one said, yes, yeah, she's ugly, but she might be a pretty good old girl. You know, beauty's only skin deep. And the other one said, well, let's skin her. <laughs>